brethren, pray the Lord, and we say hallelujah to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ because he's our Savior, and we say Hosanna because the Lord who saves us. And so we thank God for every moment that we are still breathing in and out, still alive, still proclaiming, and still holding on that he is our Lord and Savior. And so we pray and thank God for the opportunity he gives us all the time. Father God, thank you that this is another chance, this is another opportunity you give us to proclaim your name, that you are the Lord. And we pray the Lord you bless us as we interact with your word again, because in it there is peace, there is joy that we desire in our lives, and so that we shall continue being influencers of our generations, being influencers of our generations in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, we thank God for his word and he sends his word and he saves us. And so it is something that we shall always find solace. We shall find our peace. We shall find our joy when we are in one accord with the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is something that we shall always do. We keep repeating some of these things because we don't have any other terminologies to use, but they are the very ones that keep livening us, that, gives, that keep giving us opportunity to say, hey, look here the world. God loves you. God cares about you. And they are the very words that we use to keep energizing ourselves and, you know, uh, revitalizing ourselves for his glory. Now, the person that we take um, lessons from, this man in the Bible, in the book of Judges, this time it is a male judge, the man called Gideon. And Gideon is a great man that, you see, you open the book of Judges in chapter 6, you read chapter 7, you read, and chapter 8, you read. He covers, you know, what he did and how he was called and where he was found. They are all great lessons for us as men and women who are living in our generation. And you know their names appear here because it is something that they contributed. And so I begin with the point that actually the men and the women who appear here and their great lessons for us is because they purposed and because God used them to do great things and their name is written somewhere for our reading and for our example. So Gideon this time is the man and we find him in chapter 6. Chapter 6 of Judges, and I just want to read a few verses because it will lay the, the background to what I'm going to say. That the people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord gave them into the hand of the Midian seven years. So this one states seven years. The others would mention 20, the others would mention 13, but this one is seven years. And the hand of Midian empowered overpowered Israel and because of Midian the people of Israel made for themselves the dens that are in the mountains and the caves and the strongholds now dens for hiding they are in their own country but they hide because the Midian Midianites overpowered them and verse 3 the Bible says that for whenever the Israelites planted crops the Midianites and the Amalekites and the people of the east would come up against them. They would encamp against them and devour the produce of the land as far as gather and live and leave no, no sustenance in the land and no sheep, oxen, or donkey. Meaning that they would come and plunder. They would come and destroy everything. They would come and take everything that the Israelites had, you know, had toiled to do. It was such a very, it was such a terrible time. Now, verse 5. For they would come up with their livestock and their tents. They would come like locusts, enemies coming like locusts in number. Both they and their camels would not be counted. So that they laid waste the land as they came in. You know, they would. this is the situation that was in Israel. And in verse 6, and Israel was brought very low. Because of the because of Midian, 
And the people of Israel cried for the Lord, to, for help from the Lord. Their outlet, their way out was crying to the Lord. I've said this before, I say it again. And so what we need to do, whatever it is, cry to the Lord. The Israelites cried to the Lord and in verse 7, when the people of Israel cried out to the Lord on the account of the Midianites, the Lord sent a prophet to the people of Israel and he said to them, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I led you up from Egypt and brought you out of the house of slavery and delivered you from the hand of the Egyptians and from the hand of all who oppressed you and drove them out before you and gave you the land. And I said to you, so this is what the Lord had told them, I am the Lord your God. You shall not fear the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but you have not obeyed my voice. We have said this before we say it again. And just like he said it in Isaiah chapter 1, verse you know, 18, 19, when he calls, come and reason. But then he said that if you are obedient, you will eat the good of the land. But disobedience would cause calamity. And this is what he's telling them here. Now, in verse 11, um, now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the tree of Tabernith of at Ophrah, which belonged to Joash the Abiezarite, while his son Gideon, now this is what we're looking for. Now his son Gideon was beating out wheat in the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. So whatever they would do, they would hide. No freedom at all. Whatever they would do, they would hide. Because the enemy had besieged them. The enemy had taken over. And so whatever they would do, and so Gideon in verse 11 was beating, but hiding in the caves, in the stones, so that the enemy would not come and take. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. The Lord with you, O mighty man of valor. And so this is what Gideon is known for, a mighty man of valor. And Gideon said to him, please, sir, the Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then is this happening to us? And where are all his wonderful deeds? Okay, that our father has counted to us, saying that did not the Lord bring us out of, out of Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and given us into the hand of the Midian. Now, Gideon had an opportunity to talk to this stranger man. And he expressed the desire for liberty, for freedom. And the Lord turned to him and said, Go in his, this might of yours and save Israel from the hand of the Midian. Do not, do not, do not fear. I send you. Pray the Lord. Now Gideon appears now, comes into picture. He's doing his work. You know, God can find you anywhere. God can call you from anywhere. Gideon was hiding and doing his work and the angel of the Lord appeared to him there and he was sent to go and do his work. Now my brother, my sister, God can find you anywhere and he sends you. All of us have a testimony as to where God found us. I have my own story and I know you have your own story and those who are not yet called, God still will find you anywhere and call you to go and do his work. And so this is the confidence that we derive from these scriptures. When you read about these men and women, in the scriptures and so we, we you continue reading on these chapters i've mentioned six seven and eight about this man gideon and so he was commissioned to go and fight and liberate israel as you read from verse 14 mighty man of valor and so god assured him of his presence and in verses 15 16 he tells him that please i mean or as he pleaded god said i'll go with you don't worry and these assurances from god are all over the place because including moses you know, he cried, and God said, I will be with you. Joshua, he pleaded, but God said, I will go with you. You know, name them. Jeremiah's, the Lord said, I will be with you. I will give you what to speak. And so even us, we find this in the scripture, and it encourages us that the Lord speaks and encourages us. That he's the one who gives us the strength. He's the one who gives us the ability. He's the one who gives us the energy to get there. He's the one who gives us the stature to do something. Because actually, uh, you find actually, uh, David was a little one, but God gave him the stature to, to, to meet 
and encounter the huge one. And so God gives us the stature to meet huge situations, you know, you know, situations that shock us, but he can uplift you and you face the situation and you go over it. And so may God, who used men and women like these ones, Gideon, Deborah, the one talked about sometime also, Ehud, the judge, the left-handed man, and many others, you know, including prostitutes that I've talked about several. God can, you know, you called these people. And so Gideon recounts his story and says, you look, God, I'm a weak one. I come from the smallest tribe. I come from the smallest family. You know, you see, he, 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 he keeps telling God excuses like others have done. And this is a human. But God, when he has chosen, he has chosen. When he has called, he has called. When he has appointed, he has appointed. And so Gideon was a man here. And so he cries to God to show him signs. He asks God for a sign and he asks the angel, don't you go away, I bring you some food. And the angel, you know, he reaches out to the food and the fire from the rock, boom. And the sacrifice is consumed. And then he also uh, continues and asking the angel for the sign. He brings fleas, uh, wool, that actually show something here. The water, I mean, the wool getting wet and the ground is not wet. The ground getting wet and the wool is not wet. Now, all these are signs. He was looking for a sign that he actually, for the confidence that God was with him. And so God also tests him in chapter 7. You know, he has, he collects men and great men all around him. He raises an army, 22,000 men and women, men to go and fight. But then God also gives him a test. Like he had given God a test, God also gives him a test. And this is a test of choosing the fighters from thousands to hundreds. Yet Midian and army was so large. And sometimes the enemy that we're going to encounter, you know, overtakes our mind and you think that we also need to do like they do. Have you ever been in an exam and this is just a little example and then someone has written and written so you get out devastated because you have written very little and you say you think okay someone who has written so much is not actually who is succeeding and then many times you discover that actually depending on what the content that is in what someone has written is the point but not the so much that has been written. And so the Midianite army could have been, you know, that large, but who was on their side? And the Israelite army could have been, you know, that small, but who was with them? And so the Bible said that who he is in us is greater than he who is in the world. Praise the Lord. He who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. So Gideon is given a test to choose, and there was a drinking test. As we read in Judges 7, uh, chapter 7 verses, um, you, you read it that way, and then you'll find that actually God told him that we're going to bring down the people. Judges 7, uh, 5. So he brought down the people, and uh, his, the Lord said to him, everyone who laps the water with his tongue as a dog laps, you shall sit by himself. Likewise, everyone who kneels down to drink, and the number of those who lapped putting their hands to their mouths was 300 men. But all the rest of the people knelt down to drink the water. And all those who knelt down to drink the water, they showed some sign of, you know, weaklingness or weakness. And they were sent back home. So those who lapped, 300 men. And look at the number of the Midianites, Big number. But as the Bible said that actually who he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. If God is for us, so Paul says in Romans 8, who can be against us? And this is Gideon the man. If God is for us, who can be against us? So the testing comes and he chose and he rises up with 300 men. And this uh, shows what God can do with our little resources that we have. 
what is it that we have? And Moses, when he was going to, to meet Pharaoh, God asked him, what is it that is in your hand? He didn't have artillery. He didn't have whatever. But he had a, a shepherd's rod, a shepherd's staff, I mean. And then God says, yes, with that, I'm going to use it. And so I'm praying that actually God, at our time, will use what we have. We may be few. We may be smaller. We may be whoever, but as long as we are faithful to God, God is going to use you to do enormous things. He used Gideon to do great things during his time. And so God did fight. God does not fight with sophisticated things. Gideon was not given sophisticated weaponry. He was not so enormous like the Mid these Amalekites and Midianites, but this the people would just shout the sword of the Lord and the sword of Gideon. And this is just a matter of mentioning God, the sword, you know? And they, they used the trumpets. The trumpets worked during that time, yes? Singing, praising. And in verse 18, chapter 7, and when I blow the trumpet, I and all the people with me, I and all the men within me. Then he blow the trumpets also on every side. So we need to position people. I want to call upon leaders in the church that we position people. So that because here Gideon is saying that you blow the trumpet on every side of the camp and shout for the Lord and for Gideon. It has challenged me in my ministry that we need to position people, men and women. Like the church, we have men, we have women, we have children, we have choirs, we have people endowed with many gifts. And so we ask ourselves, we need to position men and women. So that actually, when someone is praying from the other side, another is praying from, and then another is praying, and all the clergy, all the pastors, name them. We need to stand to take our positions. And actually, when someone is sounding this way, another one is sounding this way, another one is sounding this way, and then we say for, you know, for the Lord. Friends, this is for me and this is for you. That Gideon leaves great lessons that our total dependence should be on the Lord. Now, we need to do our part. Gideon did his part humanly. You need to do your part as a human being, as a leader in your community, as a leader in your church, as a leader in your family, do your part. Now, as I do my part, and as you do your part, God does his part, depending on, his, on him, when you have total dependence on him. Now, a few lessons, very, very quickly. One, God can call and can use anyone. We have said this before, we say it again. We have talked about Ehud. We have talked about Deborah, the judge. We have talked about earlier men that we talked about, women, men and women. God can use, can call and use anyone. Yes, we have talked about Rahab, the prostitute. We have talked about, you know, those men, Caleb, name them. God can use, can call and call and use anyone. Jael dealt with Sisera, the general of the army. And so this is great, weak man and Gideon mentioned he's weak. He is from the weakest clan, the smallest clan. And maybe you too, maybe I too. Weakest clan, smallest clan of no fighters. And the number of fighters is also small. You know, God gives him a test and he raises only 300 men. So Gideon gives us a lesson that God can call and use anyone. And so I pray for you that God will use you in whichever capacity that you are that God will uplift you like he uplifted these men and women in the Bible. And they did great work for the Lord our God. And it's not only for the Lord our God, but they also did it. They served their communities. They served their clans. They served their families. They served their nation. And so we need men and women who will, you know, who will serve faithfully in our nation, who will serve faithfully in our, in our family, who will serve faithfully in the church. We need men and women like Edion. And so another point, number two, is that it's not about numbers. This one is actually evident. It's evident that it's not about numbers only, but, but more so about our faithfulness. 
about the faithfulness of the people. So the numbers will count, yes, but the faithfulness, our dependence on God counts bigger and greater. The 300 against the huge number of the Midianites. So God can use the numbers that we have, your number. So you may be, you may think actually you are smaller. You may think that you are, you know, you are so low, but God can uplift you. God can use you. God can upgrade you. God can expand you. God can do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's not just about numbers only. It's not just about numbers only. Yes, we need the numbers, but also need the quality. Praise the Lord. We need the numbers, we also need the quality. And then another thing is God can use, and usually God uses tough situations to catch our attention. Now, Gideon, tough situation over there. Now, his father, tough situations, and, and these people visit tough situations, and they catch their attention. And may God, in the situations that we are going through, of sickness, situations of famine, situations of poverty, rampant, situations of wars, situations that are challenging and tumultuous times, even in marriages, breaking now and then. Oh, these difficult times. May God raise our faith. He raised the faith of these men. He raised the faith of these men and women. And may God catch our attention. And so we pray that God will lead us through these tough times. He led the Israelites through the tough times. He raised Gideon, the mighty man of valor. And Israel was saved. And so on your account, can someone be saved? On my account, can someone in my congregation, can someone in my family, can someone in my, at my workplace be, see the light? The Israelites did see light at the end of the tunnel because there were men and women positioned by God. Number four is that actually God sees more in us than we do ourselves. Great. More than we see ourselves. I have seen this happen sometimes before you go to the pulpit, before you do anything, you look at your, you ask, will I manage? Will I handle? But God sees more. God saw more in Moses than he himself. God saw more in Joseph than in he himself. God saw more in, in, in Joshua than he himself. God saw more in David than him. God saw more in those, or oh, everyone that God has used. God sees more. Sometimes it is our sinfulness that drains us. Sometimes it's our stature that drains us. It's because, sometimes it's because of our education that we're drained. Sometimes it's because of our poverty levels that we are in, the, you know, which, you know, classified, you know, you are looked at and, you know, God sees more in you. And God sees more in me. And so he calls someone, you are the might, might man of valor. And may God keep you. And so... Um, what you need as a brother and my sister is you need your personal encounter with God. The personal encounter is with God is will transform you, will change you, will upgrade you. Meeting with God, actually quality, quality will rise. God will raise you. So your personal encounter with God will do something for you. Gideon met God and his name um, changed actually. Sometimes they call him Jerubal. And uh, but I did tell you the meaning of the name Gideon. Gideon uh, means um, fellow of trees, a great warrior. And his name later on, I mean, sometimes also called Jerubal. Jerubal because he destroyed, uh, he encountered the, 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 the altars of Baal and destroyed them. And they said Baal himself will, will, will counter him. And so he was called Jerubal, but his name remained Gideon, the fellow of trees. And he fell. I mean, he destroyed the Midianites, he destroyed with 100 men, and he did many, many things. They were exhausted, but they kept giving them food and drink. And, and so we need people in our society that will, will support. Because actually the 300 men, they fought, and, and, but in chapter 8, verse, um, uh, verse, verse 4, is what I want to leave with you as I wind up. Is that actually, and Gideon came to the Jordan and crossed over, he and the 300 men who were with him, Exhausted yet pursuing, I found that one great. 
I found it energizing, exhausted but pursuing. You know, they were chasing the enemy, exhausted but pursuing. And so he pleaded with the people there that actually, please give some loaves of bread to the people who follow me, for they are exhausted. We need people in our society. You people in the society support the work of the church, exhausted but pursuing. I have found this something great, something important. And so we need, um, you know, we, we, we need God's grace to remain with us. God is the one who determines our success. This is the final thing that I'm putting over to you. God is the one who determines our success. Yes, for our success, can you imagine uh, that um, the numbers reduced, but success was increased from 22,000 to 300, but success was increased. And the numbers were reducing, and success was increasing. So I pray for you that actually the numbers may reduce, but success will be on your side. And so may God keep you, may God provide for you, Trust in God today, and he will do much more like he did for Gideon, he will do for you. And I believe that actually God will do much more for me, that actually exhausted but pursuing. And so never give up, exhausted but pursuing. May God keep you and provide for you. May he continue using us during our time, that our name will remain standing. Gideon's name is there, Deborah's name is there, you know, your name and my name. May we remain standing and using our resources that God has given us that we shall make an impact in our society. In the name of God, the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.